In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a mini kind of community hub intranet web page. Uh, and we're going to make it so that people can create basically their own pages for the website um, without actually having to go to the website builder. So um, here's an example of what we're going to try and create. Uh, this has been built by Bevan K from Bevan K Designs. It's a, a gateway community hub for Gateway Church Geelong here in Melbourne, Australia. And we're going to create something kind of similar to this, which could be used as like an iPad kiosk or just a, a really easy web page build to get around. So I'm going to go back to the uh, admin panel. And to start off with, I'm going to go to config, I'm going to go to definitions, and we're going to create our kind of content objects that are going to be shown in the web page. So I'm going to click create new definition. And I'm going to write and call this a hub article. The plural of it's going to be hub articles. And the parent type is going to be an article, which is basically just a, a basic object in Fluro. And on the second tab, we've got manage fields over here. I'm going to add a field. Uh, I'm going to call this the description. And that can just be a text field. I'm going to add another field. And this is going to be an image. So we're going to call it the image. The data type is going to be a content reference. And the reference type, we're going to want them to reference an image. And I might drag this up. So you choose the image first, then your description. I'm going to add a group, and we'll do something a little bit fancier. And then here, I'm going to write um, external link. And I'm going to click group as a sub object. And I want there to be a minimum of zero, so you don't have to have one. A maximum of zero, so you can have as many uh, kind of external links as you like. And the ask count, I want to be zero. And you'll, uh, you'll notice that on the right hand side, if I reset the preview here, now I can add external links. I can add as many as I like or as few as I like. Uh, I'm going to click add fields, basic fields. I'm going to call this the label. And I'm going to add another field, which is basic fields. I'm going to call this the URL. And the data type of this field is going to be URL. And now you'll notice that if I click add external link, uh, I'll, for, each, for each external link, I'm going to have a label and a URL. And because I'm a designer and I like things to look pretty, I'm gonna add a group in here. I'm gonna call this row. I'm not gonna tick groups as a sub object. And I'm just going to put these two things in there and just tick same line so that they end up on the same line when people are entering them. Just makes it a little bit nicer. And we're going to click select realms. I'm going to click central church. We'll click okay. And under advanced, uh, where it says restrictor realms, I'm gonna click central church. And what this means is that every time someone creates a hub article, it's going to go to the, this realm. And because it's only going to be locked to that realm, it means people don't have to make the decision where it goes when they create them. I'm going to hit save. And now we have our hub articles that uh, if I tap the three dots here, I can click view all hub articles. There's not going to be any because we haven't created any yet. But I can click create a new hub article. And here, uh, I'm going to call this I'm new and an image, we'll click and select an image from our library or we could drag and drop and upload one. I'm just gonna pick one that we have here. And the short description could be uh, new to the place. Uh, click here to find out more. And I'm gonna open a new tab, go to lipsum.com purely because I don't feel like typing out a whole bunch of text. I'm just gonna copy some lorem ipsum and we'll just paste that in the body. And where it says external links, I'm gonna click add external link. We'll go uh, visit the website. It's gonna be a bit superfluous because it's gonna be on our website when they see this. Um, click add another external link. Uh, uh, check us out on YouTube. Jim News there. And here this can be youtube.com. And this uh, will do the HTTP colon slash slash www HTTPS www dot uh, our website can be google.com for the example tutorial. And we'll click save. And now we've got our one hub article. And if I click new hub article, we can now do another one, maybe about us. Uh, we can click image, um, choose another image. What do we got here? Kind of sunset thing. Uh, description can be find out more information. And we'll just paste our lipsum in here as well. Add an external link. This could be like uh, meet the team. Could be forward slash something. And we'll hit save. 
And now we have two hub articles. That's a good start. Now we can get to the fun part. I'm going to click apps and going to click new site. And here uh, where we've got our templates, I'm going to click blank site. I'm going to call this the hub or the hub. <laughs> click continue. And we've got a blank page here. So the first block that I'm going to drop on the screen, I'm going to click on the left hand side where we've got the add blocks option. I'm going to search for the content cards block. I'm going to drag that on the screen. And by default, it's going to open up, uh, it's going to load up a bunch of events, which is not what we want. But the data type here, we want to search and choose hub article. And it will now load the two articles that we've created. So you can see we've got our about us and our I'm new. And there's a few settings down here that we can change. Um, one of those is the fields that it loads. So these are the fields that uh, the back end is going to load from, uh, sorry, that the, the app is going to load when it loads all of these uh, cards. Uh, if we get rid of all of these, it'll just load the entire object. Um, and if we scroll up a bit, uh, we've got our little HTML and this is kind of the template that's being repeated inside the content cards block. You can change this at any time as well, how the content cards block works if you like. You just click this little code button up here and you can completely change the options, the JavaScript, the HTML, you know, what what options it asks you, uh, the CSS, all that stuff. But I'd suggest just leaving and using the content cards the way it's generated for the moment. Um, in the HTML, uh, I'm going to add a pre-tag. This just makes it really easy for us to dump out the information of the item so that we can see all of the data that we've got. So we've got all this kind of information and data uh, for each of these cards. That's good. And then dot data, which is going to be all of our custom fields that we added. You can see we've got the description, the image, and the external link. And here uh, we've got an example in our default code of how to print out an image. I just need to see that the key of my image field is dot image. So I'm going to change this to item dot data dot image. So basically, show an image if there is one, and item dot data dot image. And you'll see that now we're getting the images of our actual uh, cards that we picked. That's really good. And down here, we've also got, you know, kind of a title and a start date, things like that. And the first line, I actually want that to be description, which I saw before. So we get that description for our card. And then uh, item.created, which would be the created date of when we created the card. So we've got both of those there. And this is probably a good time to save. So I'm going to uh, just save our site. I'm going to hit save, changes, pick a realm first. And now we're saved. So that's always a good, a good thing to do. And now what we want to do is create the, what the page looks like that when we click these and we get all the information. So I'm going to click new page. I'm just going to call this an article page. And the URL, instead of it just being a static page on our app or website, I want to put a forward slash, put a colon, and I'm going to write the word, uh, let's write the word slug. Now, the reason why I write the word slug is because by default, the content cards block is going to send through, when you click one of these cards, it's going to send through an ID and a slug, and I think maybe an item or whatever, so that we know how to catch it on the other end and display that content that the person selected. And every item in Fluoro has an ID, but it also has a slug, which is more of a readable ID. So the reason why you want to use this on public web pages is so that Google and other search engines will pick up uh, the URL. And if it's human readable, it'll help you with search engine rankings and things like that. But you'll see what it's actually going to do in a minute. I'm going to click next. And we've got an empty page here, which has forward slash article forward slash slug. And if we go back to our home page and click this block again, you'll notice that one of the options down here is a detail page. If we click that and we choose article, then uh, now if we click one of these cards, it's actually going to take us to that article page we created, but it's going to fill in the slug for us in the preview. So we can actually see the slug on the screen. And now I'm going to click uh, the blocks and I'm going to search for the custom component block, drag that onto the screen, and you'll see it kind of has a bit of default stuff, which can sometimes be handy. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of a lot of the stuff because we don't really need the 
the custom component block to really do all that much. We're just going to use it to spit out some content. So uh, you'll see that there's two computed properties, page items and page parameters. And if we go up here uh, to our HTML, we'll just get rid of the message. We'll do a pre-tag in here as well, do our mustache tags, and let's see what page items has for us. And you go, whoa, voila, it's got a, an item called slug with all the info about the card that we clicked. So the reason that's happening is because in our URL, we have uh, this slug parameter and we've provided a slug by clicking and it's um, taken us to this page. And Fluoro's realized that that is a slug and it's gone and loaded the content for us because it's assuming that's what we want to do, which in this case it is. Um, and it's put it onto our page items object so we can get that information and spit it out on the screen. So uh, we can do this by writing page items .slug .title, for instance. So we can, uh, we can spit that out at, at, in our h1 tag like that. Um, we can do page items .slug .data uh, image something like that. And you can see we can get the image information. Uh, we can do all kinds of interesting things there. Now, it's going to get tiresome writing page items .slug .data. So I'm going to add a computed property in here. I'm going to write slug. Uh, actually, even better, we'll just call it article. And for that, I want to return this .page items .slug. It means we don't have to keep writing the words up here. And we can just write article.title article.data image, you can see it's still spitting out over this because it knows that this word article, it goes, what is that? That equals this, and what's this? That equals that, and what's that? That equals, yeah, it kind of just flows through. And one of the wonders of Vue.js, it's uh, super nice. So um, yeah, so what we wanna do now is start spitting out the content, and I'm gonna click the question mark up here and we're going to look at the Fluoro View documentation, which will give us a whole bunch of nice kind of things that we can use. One of those things is an image, and you can see here we've got uh, some an example of loading in an image. So we can put that up maybe at the top of the screen, and uh, you'll see that things are broken, and the reason is because if we look in our JavaScript console, uh, it's going, hey, uh, we don't know what image, image isn't a thing. So we can have two options. We can either point this to the image, which is article.data image, or we can add another computed property and we can tell uh, this block what an image is. And that's gonna be this.article.data.image. And then we're gonna have our image up here. And we also just need to get rid of some of these, which we don't need. Um, and then bang, there's our image. Uh, and we can also write height equals maybe 400, something like that. Um, we do image height, oops, image height. Uh, no, height is what we want. Uh, this word contain over here means it's gonna contain and scale the image to fit inside the box. We don't want that, we just want it to fit the whole box, uh, cover the whole box, sorry. And uh, yeah, so we've got our image up there, that's great, we've got our title, and we want to go back to our documentation and find the compile HTML uh, component. And the reason why we want to do that is because if we spit out our article body, which is where all that interesting text is, the body has styling information with paragraphs and a bunch of, inf bunch of information in the text. It's not just plain text. So for us to render that, we want to use this Fluoro compile HTML uh, component. The template is the article dot body and the context, which is an object we can pass in. We actually don't need a context because we're just spitting out plain HTML. Get rid of that pre and voila, there's our article with our title and all the text up there. And again, probably a good time to save. I'm going to go back to our homepage and I'm going to click the I'm new and that's going to change the content completely uh, as long as I've done something right. Uh, we'll go back to our home page. We'll click um, new. Hmm, that was interesting. Go back to home page, click about us. You can see we can switch between the two. I'm not sure what happened with the thing before, but anyway, it's working now. Click I'm new and you get that content and you'll notice that it's just swapping out the slug for each article. So we can use one 
uh, template to show multiple different articles in here. So if I click in here, we'll just add a couple of little things. I'm just going to put in the date this was created. So we'll just write article dot created, and we can do a filter of time ago. This is all documented in the Fluoro JS stuff, so I'd suggest checking that out. Um, and we can do class equals font excess, just so it's really small. Maybe add a couple of line breaks in here, and for good measure, just a horizontal rule. This isn't how I would normally do things, but it's going to work fine. Actually, that looks her her terrible. Let's get rid of that. So we we'll just have the title there and the text. And um, now I'll just show you how we can render out those external links. So if we have extra links, we'll just do our pre article data. Let's see what we've got. Uh, external link. So we want article data external link. And you'll see that it's an array with potentially one or more external links. So to uh, spit them out properly, we want to use maybe a div and use view to do a v4 loop. And we'll write link in article.data.external link like that. And for that, it's going to spit out a div. So if I write this link, it's going to write out a link for every entry that we have. <clears throat> So we can use the pre tag <coughs> to write link, and you'll see we've got a label and a URL for that link. We can write link.label. We can do one of two things. We can either just do an A tag like this and make that a dynamic href, which is going to be link.url. That is going to work totally fine. We're going to be able to click that and it's going to take us to the URL. Or we can use the fluoro link, uh, fluoro link. Uh, um, element which will basically just create a link and work as well but it has the added kind of features of being able to link to other pages within the website uh, or we can just use the fluoro button which is essentially exactly the same as fluoro link it just styles itself like a button and has a couple of other options um, and to make this look a little nicer as well I'm just going to add a fluoro icon I write the word icon I'm just going to write arrow right and if you click that, uh, I'm also going to add a target underscore blank. This is just basic HTML so that when you click it, it opens in a new page. Uh, so that's fantastic. That's our external links. And I'm going to add a div around this whole thing with a V if, this is now just Vue.js, if there is external links and there's actually a more than one of them there. We're just going to spit out a little h5 heading saying uh, links, just like that. And then we're all good. Now, if we go back to our home page and we click the I'm new, uh, we've actually got two external links uh, on this one. So you see both of them. And that's the basics of how we can uh, start creating our hub. And just to show you that it works, we're going to go back here. We're going to go to content, go to hub articles, we're going to create a new hub article, and this is going to be like uh, maybe what's uh, happening. And we can choose another image here and pick what's this image? Let's plate of food. Um, find out what events we have coming up. And we're going to hit save. And we'll go back to our web page just to see what it looks like. Click our hub, and voila, now we've got what's happening about us. And I'm new. And if I click what's happening, it's going to take us to this page which has information about what's happening. So that's pretty cool. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take this up a notch. I'm going to add dynamic forms to our hub articles and we'll start adding some more features so that uh, they're not just basically content, but they can have more information like videos and other things like that. So uh, tune in to the next video as well.